Hello, my name is Bob Hayes. I'm the president of the Kelowna branch of the Okanagan Historical Society, and it is my pleasure to introduce you and welcome you to the Father Pendozi mission. I would like to first acknowledge that we are on the traditional unceded territory of the Silic people, who of course have a long history in the Okanagan Valley. So I would like to show you around the site, stopping at various buildings, talking a little bit about the history and the people involved. So again, welcome to the Father Pendozi mission. Although actually I should call it the mission of the Immaculate Conception, since that is its real name. So before we actually look at some of the buildings, let's talk a little bit about the history of this site. The site itself dates from 1860. Now, Father Pandosi, and who's an oblate minister, uh, Roman Catholic priest, uh, Father Richard, Brother Sorel, and their little company came into the Okanagan Valley in October of 1859. Their purpose was to establish a, a settlement here and, and work with the local indigenous people. They spent the winter of 1859-1860 at the south end of Duck Lake, realized in 1860 that's not where they wanted to be, and spent the next couple of months wandering around Rutland, what's now Kelowna, in the area trying to find a site, and eventually they found this site. And in 1860 they established the mission of the Immaculate Conception, what we call the Father Pandozi mission. And it consisted at that point of Father Pandozi, who was in charge, he was called the Superior, Father Richard, he was second in command, he was given the rather dubious title, Inferior, and Brother Sorel was the, the worker as far as buildings and agriculture goes. And it was Brother Sorel who actually built this first building. When the Oblates selected this site, in 1860 it wasn't accidental. It was a very important natural location for a mission. It's close to Mission Creek, which is where a lot of the, the Silic people used to come to fish. And it's close to the lake again, which is where the, the local indigenous people spent a lot of their time. On Mission Creek nearby, there were also a lot of Chinese who were doing mining uh, subsequent to that and around the area of course we had a lot of French settlers located. So the mission site was actually ideally located and it gradually grew from its originally original small area to uh, well over a thousand acres as, as parcels of 160 acre preemptions were added and it was a, a working ranch till the 1890s when the Catholic Church started di to divest itself of the property gradually reducing just to the, the mission site and eventually it was all sold off but but subsequently repurchased by the catholic church and is now part of the history of the catholic church in the area this is the chapel of course one of the first things they wanted to do the first the uh, the oblates was to work with the indigenous people which was to convert them to roman catholicism they wanted a chapel this was the first building that brother sorel would have built in 1860 and it's a very simple building and it was of course to house early services so this is the interior of the chapel as i say built by brother sorel very simple inside this is where local residents including a lot of indigenous people would have come for the sacraments of, of baptism marriage or burial and this is where the first services were held the Oblates actually covered a large area from basically Osuis up to Kamloops, but this mission here was the center of their, of their existence and their livelihood. The chapel actually served two purposes. The second purpose was a residence upstairs for the Oblates, Pandozi, Richard, and Sorel. So they would have spent their lives when they weren't working with their the local people upstairs in rather confined quarters. This is the oldest and the building on the site. Originally there were probably four buildings. Eventually they fell into disrepair and by the 1950s they were actually slated to be burned. And it was through the efforts of the, the Catholic Church and other organizations that this site was actually preserved in the 1950s. Three of the original buildings still being on site. It is important to remember that the mission was actually an operating farm and ranch. It was the mission ranch producing variety of 
crops, animal products to sustain a community. And this is the root house. It was built in 1865 by Brother Sorrell. It has double walls that have insulation dirt between the, the, the logs. It was designed as a, a root cellar above ground for produce. It's always very nice and cool there in the summer and the winter. And again, it's one of the original buildings. One of the features of it, of course, is the, the dovetail uh, log construction, which was uh, quite common in that era of, of, of log buildings. So again, this is one of the original buildings on site and has been carefully preserved. It is important to realize that the mission site is actually a conglomeration of buildings from various places. The three original buildings are the root house, the chapel, and in the distance, the brother's house. All the other buildings were moved here subsequently and have become part of the site, but are not original to the location. This is the blacksmith forge. It was not original to this site. It was built in the Jewel Rich area and moved to this site about 1974 and reconstructed. Uh, a blacksmith forge was very important because, of course, it provided a lot of the implements needed on a farm. You will notice that the logs are different. This, these are, are round logs and they're not the tongue or the, the dovetail construction that the other buildings had. I should mention that uh, many of the earlier buildings, like the McDougall House, were actually built by McDougalls, who were amongst the finest log builders in the area. This one obviously is much later, but it's still a significant part of our community. So this is the McDougall House, or as the sign says, the Maison McDougall. It is important also to realize that the early settlers, many of them were Francophones. McDougall was an exception. He was a Hudson's Bay man who came here in 1861. He married Amelia Topa, and they had a large family, about, I believe, 10 sons. This was one of their first homes. It was not located here. It was originally near what's now Gushigan, and it was moved to this site a number of years ago and, and carefully preserved as one of the earliest log buildings in the central Okanagan. It's very tiny. You can't imagine all of those people, including these big strapping McDougal sons, crowded inside. On site there are a number of early farm implements to do with local agriculture and also agriculture from other places. And these have been located here. They need preservation. Probably some of them don't belong here because of the agriculture was not local. However, they again are an indication of the agricultural roots of this area and are, are important parts of our past. This is the largest structure on the site. It's obviously a barn built about 1886. Now, it was not originally here. It was apparently about 500 feet south of here. And in 1973, it was taken apart and reassembled on site as part of the original site. It, of course, reflects the agricultural aspect of, of the mission site. It's, a, it's an amazing structure. Again, you can see the local the log construction. It's a later form. It's not the dovetail construction. But it is uh, definitely important to the site. We are now at the back of the property, and one of the hidden gems on the mission site is this beautiful pond. There's actually this pond, and behind it there's another uh, water uh, site. And then Mission Creek is not far from here. This pond is in the summer, full of turtles. And it, again, it represents something that we've lost in the Okanagan, which is the, is the small ponds that used to dot our landscape. So it is a, a very important uh, <laughs> local uh, birding paradise. People come to look at the various birds that, that nest here. And again, it's a reminder of a part of our, our history, that we, our natural history, that we have lost. So this is another of the three original buildings on site. Again, it was constructed by Brother Philippe Sorel about 1865. Brother's house means only Frère Oblat. This is where the Oblates, usually there were three on site. It was originally Father Pandozzi, Father Bouchard, Brother Sorel. But we had a, a, a number of oblates. There were about 14 different priests who were here over the 30-year history of the site. This is where they would have lived. Now, eventually, there was a much larger building built uh, to accommodate visiting dignitaries. And it was located on site, but sadly, it burned in the 1930s. But again, this is one of the original buildings to the site. 
and one of the oldest log buildings in the Central Okanagan. Of course, part of the original mission site was the cemetery. The cemetery is to the west of here, across its now Van Bolen Road. It started in 1860, and there are a number of burials in that small cemetery, including Father Pandozzi himself. He died in 1891, and he's one of the last burials there. Another oblate is Father Gendre. He died in the 1860s. He's buried in that site. Now, all of the graves are unmarked. There are a lot of, of graves of, of small children and babies, many of indigenous origins. The cemetery, again, is a very important part of this site, but it is not actually connected to the site anymore, being separated by the road and, and now is located on uh, property that is, isn't right adjacent to the site. This is the Christian house, Maison Chrétienne. It actually was from the Allison district. It was built by one of the McDougalls, Dave McDougall, about 1890 in the Allison district. And its first inhabitant was a resident was Joseph Chrétien, who settled in Van Bolen, just north of here in 1861. 1890, he moved to Allison, and this was his house. And it reflects a change in our history. The earlier log buildings are much more simple, much smaller. This is a real house with real rooms, bedrooms, kitchen, a parlor, and it shows how things are developing. And it's rather appropriate that it's on the site because it reflects the social changes that were going on. This house was slated for demolition. It was donated to the mission site in 1970 and moved here in 1971 as a BC Centennial project, reconstructed and set up as a late Victorian home. One of the important parts of this house is the upstairs, which was actually one of the first schools in the central Okanagan. In 1894, Joseph Chrétien allowed one room upstairs to be used as a classroom. Dorothea Thompson was the first teacher, and there were about half a dozen, maybe eight local students who would come here, go upstairs, and receive their education. I must admit, on a, on a personal note, I'm rather proud of the fact that my grandmother, Maggie Wheeler, was one of the first students here in 1894. In 2010, for the 150th anniversary of the establishment of this site, a statue was commissioned, a statue of Father Pandozzi, and this was uh, unveiled in 2012, and it's the newest addition to the mission site, again reflecting that the site is, is changing constantly as more of the history is recognized, and it's become a very, very popular part of the, of the 